Rosaria, Danae, um, you have much to, to teach me and, and many others, I think, about uh, adoption, foster care. Can you, can you tell, begin with the, the context, uh, children you've adopted, fostered? Yeah. Well, we, we are blessed to have four children by adoption. We um, adopted all four out of foster care, um, although two came through a private agency. So two of our children came as infants, and then two of our children came as teenagers, so at the age of 17. And we did that twice, and you've never seen me on the Dr. Phil show, which of course means it all worked out. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, it, and, it, and it did, because the covenant is not just about healthy babies needing homes. Mm. And so um, so when I tell people that I've adopted people who stand a foot taller than I do, it's, mm -hmm. it's just true. <laughs> How about yeah. you, Danae? Um, yeah, my oldest son is 6'5". Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's hysterical, and here we are, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, we were able to adopt our first two children through the foster care system. Um, they were eight and five when we adopted them. Brother, biological siblings, um, we've fostered uh, other children through foster care and then just through maybe unofficial foster care kids in our church. Um, so we've had Many come and go, um, and our, but our two that, have, that we've been able to adopt. How about you? <laughs> uh, yeah, so we, uh, we went from zero to four. We adopted four kids from Ukraine uh, nine years ago, a, a, a biological sibling group. And then about a year later, uh, we added uh, an Ethiopian uh, to our mix, uh, Joshua. So now we have five teenagers uh, ranging from 13 to 18. Yeah. And yeah. it has okay. been uh, quite a ride. So great on the food bill too. Right? Oh my goodness! Yes, 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 yes. yes. Uh, talk to us about what you guys have learned. Uh, people who, who may watch this uh, video um, may be struggling. Uh, the struggle is real in uh, adoptive parenting and, and foster mm -hmm. care. Um, just some encouragement that you might offer. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, I would say all hands on deck. And what I mean by that is we have tens of thousands of children in the foster care system in the United States. And Tony, you're gonna to have to do the count internationally. Mm -hmm. um, it's an enormous, uh, it's an enormous crisis and it's an, an enormous opportunity for the church to show that the covenant is big and wide and capacious. Mm -hmm. um, and so maintaining a home studied house can be extremely helpful. Um, safe families is a, is, a, is a wonderful opportunity for people to just kind of dip in mm -hmm. um, because it allows you to be home studied. It allows you to work collectively with other families in the church. So you might not be able to, you know, and like Tony, you might not be able to have the room for a sibling group, but you could mentor a, a, the mom in job, in job training and things mm -hmm. like that. So I would do that. But I would also say, and boy, I know this is where it's going to get a little, little dicey here. Um, Single people are needed. Hmm. They're needed. Yeah, we, we have some great single moms mm -hmm. uh, uh, fostering and adopting in our church. Um, I think even, even thinking about that, how important it is to include your community in the process. So I think what makes adoption, what can make it really challenging is all the different things. Parenting is hard enough as it is. And it takes a village and a community to parent your children. But when you add in trauma and loss and you know, maybe some special needs. There's so much. And it's just, it's so easy as Americans to just get really, especially when there's pain, to get really tunnel visioned and just kind of hunker down and do things on your own. And you have to invite your community in. I think people want to be part of it. They don't always know mm -hmm. how. And sometimes you have to take the, the initiative and say, hey, I really, I, I need to be vulnerable and say, I need some help and I need some support. And it's always been amazing to see how Christian community is able to come around families who are struggling. Um, I think the best advice I can give adoptive parents is don't do it by yourself. Even if you can, right. this is something that your church family needs. You get to kind of be, um, to give this gift to your local church to care for orphans. You happen to be the home that's mm -hmm. taking them in, but your whole church gets to come around these children right. and teens. Exactly. What, what, what would you say? Well, uh, amen to what you're saying. Um, just if, if you feel in, in the adoption uh, parenting process that uh, you're weak, um, I would just say you're not unusual. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, if you're considering adoption and, or foster care, um, this is an opportunity to really show off the grace of God. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it will be an opportunity for you to uh, learn how to pray. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It will be uh, an opportunity for you to take your wounds, the wounds that you feel, Mm -hmm. from from these children 
to the wounds of Christ, mm-hmm. who who understands yeah. uh, our our wounds and sympathizes with us mm-hmm. in our weakness. And so we have a strong Savior. Uh, we, mm-hmm. We're a weak people, but we have right. a strong Savior. Yeah. And those are the kinds of people that God mm-hmm. uses in this process. Absolutely. And so um, yeah. adoption has taught me how to pray. It's taught mm-hmm. me how to, it's, it's, uh, it's made me desperate. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, mm-hmm. but we wouldn't change the story right. uh, at right. all right. because children matter. Right. And um, we have a short life. That's right. And if you want to make your life count, here's a good way. Mm-hmm to right. really make your life count yeah. is to invest in the least of these. Yeah. Right. Um, and then I just think that the deepest, most sustaining uh, truths that, that, you know, in this journey for us have been the real, the most basic of truths mm-hmm. of, of simply trusting God, yeah. trusting mm-hmm. in His sovereignty. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's remembering that our reward is in heaven. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love Luke 14 when, when Jesus says, if you're going to have a party, don't invite mm-hmm. you know your rich relatives mm-hmm. and your friends, yeah. but invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, mm-hmm. and the blind, yeah. because they cannot repay you, but you will be repaid at the resurrection of mm-hmm. the just. Yeah. And he just he fills up ordinary hospitality mm-hmm. with eternal mm-hmm. ramification, yeah, right? Yeah. And that 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 truth has just been great when you experience ingratitude from uh, kids, mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. you know, we adopted our kids. We mm-hmm. thought, man, they're going to sing praise songs about us, and uh, and so. And then we, you saw the holes in the wall. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> right. That's right. Then you call the police, and, right, and uh, exactly. it's orphan care is warfare. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But what, but we do it with our eyes yeah. uh, on Jesus yeah. and. Um, uh, in the in the kingdom. Yeah, you know. the picture I have as you're talking is just what a gift it is to be invited to participate with the sufferings of Christ, mm-hmm. and that that is just some. It's a real privilege to be able to step in and walk in suffering with with children that belong to God. And that's probably the thing that God mm-hmm. most reminds me of is when I'm wrestling with God and praying for a kiddo who just has so much pain. I don't know the future of, and it and it's overwhelming the mm-hmm. brokenness and suffering is that these are his kids. So he is the father to the fatherless mm-hmm. and he they he he treasures them and has mm-hmm. placed them in our care because of that. And so I think just to hold on to that truth that, right. that these are yeah, you know, so this is God's daughter, this is God's son, mm-hmm. um, is a really powerful reminder mm-hmm. as you're just bringing this back to God daily. May I add one more basic? Mm-hmm. Cuz you know, it's easy. It's the basic that we all forget in this yeah. in this mm-hmm. group because We've got two pastors' wives and a pastor. (laughs) But another basic is the crucial importance of church membership. Mm. Because when you are a Bible-believing member of of a covenant church, your brothers and sisters in the church are, you have the responsibility to say to them, this is how my son with autism responds mm-hmm. when you give direct eye contact. You you have a you have the family right to elbow each other a little bit and 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 we're going to be there for each mm-hmm. other. We believe that the church is there from cradle to grave. We don't mm-hmm. believe Jesus is our imaginary friend. Mm-hmm. We believe that all the good things that we're talking about are going to come in part through the pastor and the elders and our relationship as brother and sisters. Mm-hmm. So so show up we must. Yeah. Mm-hmm but we don't show up alone. And, right. and mm-hmm. part of why is because there's a lot of rejection. Right. Mm-hmm. So we are not adopting children so that we can be their savior. Right. Mm-hmm. We are not adopting children so that we can you know, get a good pat on the back. Right. That's not mm-hmm. why we show up. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, we very well may be rejected. Right. In fact, in fact, you know, maybe 10 years from now, we'll get together again on this panel. And, right. and I hope it, it's not that way, but will we be able to say it was all worth it even if they leave us? Right. Mm-hmm. Will we be? We must. Right. Well, let me answer that. Absolutely. We must be able to say that. Right. We must be able to say that we have followed Jesus mm-hmm. through this, not to gain something, mm-hmm. but to give. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm.